well, what's going on y'all so we are back we are back hopefully y'all can see me it's like no what <laughs> no matter where i put and set up it's going to be a glare because it is at this moment it is sometimes shy outside i know we in spring but baby it's 68 degrees okay and um girl it's supposed to be 75 tomorrow you know they finna show out and i said let me go ahead and do this video before they ramp it up because sometimes they be out here drag racing ain't nobody got time for all of that and it be so irritating hearing them okay and the cops was out there the other night it's a lot but anyway we are back for another movie corner and since you know we did say the last dance um I felt like it would only be right if we do honey, okay? Honey, honey. <laughs> now, let me tell you something. Honey is one of those movies that, of course, came out around a time where all of these hip-hop dance movies were coming out. You had the Step Ups. You had the uh, Say the Last Dance. Say the Last Dance probably, I feel like, was in the initial batch because I think Say the Last Dance came out like in the late 90s, 99, 98, something like that, early 2000. Uh, don't quote me, okay? Y'all go look at the video for that and y'all will know. But at the same time, then we got like Say the Last Dance, then we got like the Step Up movies and stuff like that. I think the Step Up movies probably came after Honey or around the same time or whatever. Either way, they all in the same conglomerate, okay? And. <laughs> I really thought, you know, Honey probably was the superior movie out of all of these little dance movies that came out when we was kids. Listen, let me tell you something. They threw out dance movies left and right for us. Okay, for us urban kids, I guess you can say that. Because I feel like that's what the target audience was. But they didn't really appeal to us if you look at it now. And we ate it up, girl. We ate it all the way up, all right? We was like, oh, my God, look at this. Look at this stuff. Look at this. And then you go back and you look at it as an adult. And you're like, wow, to be a kid and to be naive, okay? If, you, if we watch these movies as adults now, you know, sometimes it's hard to be, <laughs> not to be overly uh, critical or analytic. But at the same time, we watch it for nostalgia. We watch it for fun. We know that it's not the best, but it's fun at the same time. Because they didn't take themselves seriously, so why should we? It's cool to point out some things that just didn't make sense or things that just wouldn't happen in real life. But at the same time, it just takes us back to our childhood. Now, some of us had some good childhood. So, it, it takes me back to a memory and all that stuff. Girl, I had no idea that Billy Woodruff was the one who directed this video or i should say movie and it kind of makes sense that somebody who works within the music industry because it's all about you know hip-hop r&b music and all of that stuff and doing video because we were the ones that was you know i know they had them up in the pop girls and the white girls and the white guys and all that stuff but being a video dancer back in the day it was really a big thing it was really a big thing not just being a vixen or whatever but an actual dancer you know what i'm saying like choreography you know one two stepping up in this piece okay that was really a big thing we don't see too much of that now but back then girl if you got a video you got a video you was the it girl okay you was the it girl the it guy and all of that so i appreciate honey for you know showing us that aspect of it right and it did touch on some things about how sexism work and misogyny and all of that. But also, I feel like <clears throat> Honey Daniels was probably like one of the weakest ones out of this group. Because they made it seem like Honey Daniels can really dance. I may be, you know, reaching a little bit. I mean, she was better than Julia Styles. okay? Somebody gonna say so. You know, uh, Julia Styles, and I had got her all mixed up with the lady on, um, with uh, what's her name, Carrie Russell on Cocaine uh, Bear. I was like, oh, okay, my bad, my bad, don't jump me in the comments. It was a slip of the tongue, you know, they all look, I don't want to say that. But they do kind of favor a little bit. You want to know who else kind of favor to me? What happened to Lily Sabosky? 
Girl, I was looking at Joyride the other night, and I see, damn, where she at? That movie Glass House that she did back in the day. Oh, that was my movie. That was my movie. Okay, see, I like some of the girls back then. Uh, they gave us some quality stuff. You know, I can't name a lot of the girls these days, but back then, we knew our actors and actresses no matter what color they was. Okay, we knew them because they gave some good stuff. But um, anyway... She danced better than Julia Stiles, but see, Julia Stiles was her character. Her character was supposed to be trying to learn hip hop. Honey Dangles was supposed to be all the way ingrained in hip hop because she wanted to be a dance teacher. She wanted to be a video girl. She wanted to be a choreographer. She wanted to be all of that, right? And um, if you ask me, Miss Honey Dangles and her moves were very basic. Now let me just tell you this before somebody get on my ass. The bitch can she can dance better than me. Okay, she can dance better than me. You know, because I'm one of those people. I hit a beat. I'm gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? I got the little rhythm or whatever. Give me some choreography to do. No, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I'll be like, how do you pick that up? I just don't know. Like it don't feel comfortable to move this way to move that way. I want to move this way and go that way. You know, I'm that type of person, right? But at the same time, so I applaud the girls that know how to pick up choreography because Ashley just could not. Um, but anyway, Honey came out in 2003, right? It's an hour and 34 minutes. If you guys haven't seen it, which I don't know where you've been, unless you must be really young, it's on Tubi, okay? If you want to go back and rewatch it or whatever, you want to watch it for the first time, go watch it on Tubi. Now, beware, I went to go watch it on Tubi. Baby girl, how come there are four Honey movies? Why do we have four honey movies? How did that happen? And I vaguely remember the one that's the last one that has um that has Tiana Taylor and Brashear Gray. You know, how came from Empire. I vaguely remember that. Didn't watch it, but I think the you know commercials or whatever that they used to I remember that. But I did not know that that was like the fourth one. I thought that was number two. <laughs> Girl, I go on Tubi, they said, uh, honey, two, three, and four. I said, excuse me? Why did y'all do that? I really hate when people take movies from a franchise or, you know, take a original movie and then they try to build an Ill illegitimate franchise off of it because it's not the real people that's involved in the first one that's doing these sequels and all this stuff. It takes away from me, but hey, it is what it is. We get into the movie and we let's get into this cast, Okay. Somebody told me because Laurieann Gibson is in here and she's playing Katrina. And truth be told, Katrina was the better dancer than Honey. That's because Laurieann Gibson is an actual real life chore uh, choreographer. You know what I'm saying? Boom Boom Cat. That Lori Gibson. You know, yeah. So Lori Gibson has been around for a while. She's up there with the Fatima Robinsons, okay? You know, uh, and love her. Love her damn. Um, and this is back in the day when we actually knew who the choreographers were, you know, and they had prestige to their name as well, just as much as the artists, you know. So we got Jessica Alba. Let me see something about Jessica Alba. Where was Jessica Alba born? You was born in Pomona, Pomona, Pomona California. Hmm, she 42 years old. Girl, you don't know nothing about the hood. <laughs> I'm sorry. It just came out like that. It just came out like that. Um, I bring that up for for a reason. Then you got Makai Fife for playing Chaz, who was her love interest eventually. Um, you have oh, he looks good. He still looks the same. The little boy that plays uh Raymond Zachary. I wish I could bring it up and, and, and y'all can actually see his picture. But his name is Zachary Isaiah Williams. And I mean he literally looks the exact same, but an adult. He cut his hair though. Uh, and you have Romeo playing his big brother, and his name was Benny in the movie. Okay. Romeo was put in this movie because I guess Romeo was hot back then. And honestly, like, when it can we talk about Romeo career? Romeo as an artist? No. Like when I was growing up, it was always it was Bow Wow versus Romeo. And I was seeing Bow Wow. 
I knew every Bow Wow song that came out. You know what I'm saying? Romeo, little Romeo, you just don't know. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing. And I knew he had a little stint on Nickelodeon. And other than that, I didn't know nothing else about Bow uh, uh, Romeo besides the fact that he was Master P's son. That's it. Other than that, girl, I could care less. I could care less. And after looking at Honey, I really cared less. Because <laughs> I was like... You had Silk the Shocker up in the movie as well. And I said, well, how did you get up in this movie? Maybe because at that time he probably was on um, Nickelodeon. I do know he did have his own show. I don't know. Y'all could tell me in the comments. But worst actor ever in this movie. Okay. Because once, one thing that I don't like, and I understand he was a kid. There are child actors out here who have real talent. And they can act. And they know how to sound natural. You know what I'm saying? Like they having a conversation with us for real. And not like they trying to remember their lines. And not get the lines wrong. And so it sound like they stuck, stuck the cadence in their talk. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. That's what he was doing the whole time. And that whole lip thing. Trying to hold his mouth to make it seem like. Yeah, yeah. I said, uh-uh. Put that lip down and relax your face. Okay, relax your face. You know, that's what I just needed him to do. But we ain't going to go too much because, you know, he was a kid. So, it is what it is. He was out there making his money. So, hey, you do what you got to do. And then you had Joy Bryant. She plays Gina. And she is Honey's best friend. Joy Bryant used to be up in all these little funky movies that I used to like back in the day. Joy Bryant was, um... <clears throat> one of the very first movies I think I saw her in was Carmen a Hip Hopper with Beyonce... Uh, Raw Digger and Joy, she played her two, one of her two best friends. Um, and then she was in Eight Mile with uh, Fifty Cent, not Eight Mile, but um, oh my God, Fifty Cent movie. I can't remember what the name of it was, but she was up in it, and she played his uh, girlfriend and the mother of his child. I hope it ain't the one that he um. Well, it was supposed to be autobiography for a little bit. The one that he don't talk to no more. Yeah. So you get that. And then you got a whole bunch of cameos. Um, my, This dude named David Mount. What's his name? Moscow. He played Michael Ellis, the musical director. You see Tweet in a video or in the movie. You got Tweet. You got Dark Child, a.k.a. Rodney Jerkins. You have Gene Wine comes in there. Um, we saw Franz work Bentley. We saw Hits. From the streets. Oh my God. If you was around when Rap City was around. And the basement. All of that stuff. You know about hits. And see them and see the world. You know about hits from the street. He was there. Right. Because um, he was the guy that was at the bar. When they first started the movie. And um, her friend came up. Gina. When uh, Honey was behind the bar. Just doing her little bartender thing. And Gina was like. Give me a drink. You know. She was like. You know what's on the house. And it was some two guys. He was the black guy. Right, that was hits and all that. I said, oh, okay. Um, and then you had <clears throat> her mama, who is Connie Daniels, played by Lynette McKee. If you've never seen the original Sparkles, and I'm not talking about the one that had um, Whitney Houston and Jordan Sparks in there and Tika Sumter, no, I'm talking about the original one. The lady that played Lynette, the lady that played um, Honey's mother, she played sister in the original one. And I feel like the original one was real, real, real sad. Okay, real, real sad. Like I said, we had, um, you know, and that's basically it. Like I said, we had the, the Lori Ann in there and all that stuff, whatever. But let's just get it to the movie. Let's get it to the movie. <clears throat> what can we say? Er... Honey is about this young girl. She's 22 years old. She's out here with a dream and a prayer. You know, she has dreams and aspiration of wanting to become this dancer, this choreographer, and all of this. You know, she just wants to set the world on fire with her smoking dance move. You know, and I said, oh, okay, you know, I mean, she got a little dream and she's trying to put forth the effort to do something about it. So she's taking a couple of jobs, you know, so that she can still afford to keep herself up and so that she can live and pay her bills while she's trying to pursue her dreams on the side see y'all need to learn from honey dings okay honey was showing us that you know even though your passion is what you're trying to make your career um you still gotta work towards it and work Towards them bills, meaning you got to have a job to help sustain you until your passion becomes 
a fulfilled career goal that can actually help you you know so that you won't have to have those extra jobs or whatever so that you can let your career you know sustain your life see take that as a lesson you know honey this was teaching us she was teaching the girls because sometimes y'all be out here just just thinking that oh i i want to be an entrepreneur but baby you could be an entrepreneur but before you can be that entrepreneur you're gonna have to get a nine to five or something you're gonna have to get something you can't just sit around until that thing pop off you know what i'm saying you're gonna have to do something to pay them bills all right so then it was so funny because this is supposed to be out in new york in the bronx okay um <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny when the movie pops on and then we finally see honey in the dance club <laughs> and this is how she is when we first see her she's behind a bar she behind a bar making the drinks right and she's like this I said I don't know no bartender that be uh, smiling and cheesing the whole time like that but um we see this guy that has a video camera I said not the old handheld video camera you know she up there just taking video of uh, the people on the dance floor now see let me tell you something in 2003 I was still in grammar school. I was like junior high. Okay. I wasn't even in high school yet or whatever. But my whole thing is this half was in the club for the people that's a little bit older than me. And y'all used to do the little club and stuff like that. Did people break out in dance teams like this in the middle of the club? Girl, because back in the day, they actually used to dance in clubs. Okay. I really thought I was going to be in that era where we actually dance and I see people dancing and all that stuff. By the time I got old enough, people just sitting around. They're just sitting around. Ain't nobody dancing on the floor. They're just standing around on the wall or whatever. And I'm just like, so this is the club life, huh? Drinking expensive liquor that might be a little bit watered down. Um, and that's it, right? And just watching everybody just stand on the wall and Mac. That's all. Right, okay. I didn't miss nothing, you know? Um, and so you get that and then her friend comes up and, you know, she gets her little drink and everything and, you know, her, I guess her time at the bar and it's time for her to clock out. So now she goes to the dance floor and she has a rival on the floor. Her name is Katrina played by Lorianne. Now Lorianne and her crew was out there tearing up that flow for real, right? And then here come, um, honey and her couple of girls and her crew or whatever. They do a look. And that's it. Next thing you know, you, 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 you turn around and you see Honey on the floor. And she's in the back bend. I said, girl, get your ass up off that dirt. I said, first of all, you knew this was fake. Because why was the floor so goddamn clean? You are in a club where people spill alcohol and probably other bodily fluids, okay? And you mean to tell me that floor was just so clean. Clean enough for her to lay down on that floor. Put her head in that floor. For her to swim on her side in that floor. And not get nothing on. I said, oh, okay. And that was the moment that caught everybody eye and attention. Now, I want y'all to go back. And I want y'all to look at that first dance scene. And I want y'all to tell me. Who, 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 which one was better? You with Katrin, uh, what's her name? Katrina? Or you with Honey? Okay? And I mean, be for real. Don't play games, all right? You know, I ain't going to judge you with whichever one you choose. But if you don't choose correctly, I'm going to sit here and be like, hmm interesting but anyway after they get through doing their things okay they go outside through the back and the kids are outside randomly outside in the back of the goddamn club and they're not even listening to the music it's not even like they're trying to get into the club they just decide to come behind this club okay and to you know do their little like breakdown stuff you know break dancing and everything it was given very much like beach street back in the day you know it was given very much the 80s where we throw down a cardboard box and um we flatten it out on the floor and we just do our thing and all of that that's what it was giving right and i was like oh, okay this is cute and they was doing a little beatbox in their own music right so i said this is so random at this late night don't y'all supposed to be in the bed getting ready for school like what is going on because it was after midnight why are y'all still up? Including the little baby Raymond. Why are y'all still up? What is going on? I said, call Child Protective Services. Okay? Because something about this is not right. But they out there doing their little thing. Whatever. This is where we see little Romeo. His little crew. His little brother. Um, And 
when I tell you them little kids, they was up there doing it, right? And then you had that one girl. Now, I'm going to call her a stud, okay? We're going to call her a little time boy. Because I want to know where she at these days. We know where Allison, y'all remember Allison Stoner? You know, she used to do the dance and she used to dance in the Miss Elliott videos. She's still out here doing her thing. Oh, I hope she pops up on the tour. I seen her doing a little promo for the tour, but I hope she pop up on the tour. I love her. But um, anyway, they was killing it. They was killing it, right? Next thing you know, the music that they was beatboxing kind of slow down, right? The vibe slow down and everything. You want to know why? Because then Lil Romeo comes up and he do his. And it was slow like that. I ain't never seen no Harlem Shake that was slow like that. I said, when we Harlem Shaking and we doing it fast, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it up in rhythm. And I was just like, oh, okay. And he really can't dance. <laughs> They made it seem like he could dance, but he really could not dance. And then they got the thing, and he did a little type of move. Um, and then security came and broke it up. Okay, she just so enamored with it. Like, oh my God, I can't believe that these kids can dance like this. I said, kids been dancing like that? Okay, okay, honey, we're going to give you that. Next day, you know, you know, she's walking down the street going to the center. And she told them, you can come to the center and, and, and dance with us, whatever, if you want. Because she's a little dance teacher, right? Um, You go to the center and as she's walking, mind you, this is New York. It's a couple of guys that's walking in front of her. And one of them dropped a big wad of money. Now. <laughs> would you have picked that money up and given it back to him? Ashley wouldn't have. I would have a conflict of conscience because bills need to be paid. And if you are stupid enough to walk around with that much money on that's tied up in a rubber band and um you're not smart enough to secure it and make sure it's secure, you don't need it as much in my opinion. So therefore, and if I see it tied up in a rubber band like that, it feels as though I could be wrong. I could be wrong. It feels as though you might have gotten it illegally. So, therefore, I'm still going to take it. <laughs> I'm sorry. She said, hey, hey, y'all, you dropped your paper. I said, now, hold on. This what bothered me throughout the whole movie. You have Jessica Alba, who is a Latina. Now, I don't know if she's, uh, you know, got a little bit of black in her or whatever. But I just know that she's a Latina. Okay. Um, her parents giving very much. They could be a little bit mixed. I don't know what sister is. Her mother, Connie. Um, she does give me light skin. She could be mixed with a little bit of something. And her daddy, he does look like he could have been either mixed with something or, uh, and I mean slightly, but he looked like he could be from the West Indies. He could be Trinidadian. He could be Dominican. He could be whatever. But it just really wasn't giving me that she was 100% black, but they wanted us to feel like that. And I said, excuse me, who did the casting for this? And as an adult, I'm looking like, how did they bore this child with this hair texture? And yes, I was looking at the daddy's hair texture too. It was it was slightly almost there, but it wasn't. And so I was like, eh, we wasn't thinking about this back in the day. Um, and then you trying to force her to talk with this slang and this urban, we're going to say urban, you know, hood, urban, ghetto accent and all this stuff with all of the slang words and everything of the day. And it just really wasn't with the twain and all that in her voice. It just really wasn't working for me as I was watching this. I said, we was really sitting here eating this up. I said, now why do you have this girl thinking this black scene and everything like that? It came out every now and then, you know? They at the um center. They doing a little dance. And that one part where the little girl falls. I was like, she fell and she hurt herself. And why would y'all start laughing at her? And she said, girl, don't worry about it. And she incorporated her little slip and slide. And it was like, every time honey did a move, he go to the crowd. He go everybody around her. No matter if it was her dance class. No matter if it was in the club. No matter if it was on the video set. No matter where it was. It was always this. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, girl, it wasn't all that. It was basic as hell. <laughs> but we ate it up. We ate it up. And then here come the little Runch Bunchkin's crew. Uh, Benny and his little brother and they peoples or whatever. And they just come there messing things up. And just being little uh, assholes and all that stuff. You know. But you see that Benny took to it. And what we realized is that Benny's little crew. They like a little gang. 
All right, they sell drugs for this one drug dealer. Um, we have one dude that's in the crew. His name is Otis. You know, the little, the one that kind of looked the oldest, the little dark skinned one. Um, he sells drugs for his brother. You know what I'm saying? So he runs that little crew. And Benny is in that crew, you know. Um, and so you got all of that going on. And then we get the dynamics again with, um, maybe his dog daddy was Puerto Rican. Hmm. I don't know. We get the dynamics and we see what's going on between Honey and her mother. Connie, she owns or, you know, facilitates the center that they're at. We see that um, Hun Hun Connie don't want D Honey to be out here doing this stuff. She want Honey to be out here living life and exploring the world. Like, you're wasting your talents trying to be up in this dance world and all this stuff. When you could be out here doing so much more, you know? Don't sell yourself short. Just like, Mom, this is what I want to do. And Mom was like, all right, all right. And you know how it is when you got two parents... <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't know. Catch that. But, um, no. When you living in a household with two parents, it's always either you like both of them for real, for real. Or, you know, you like them. But, you know, that one is going to be a little bit easier than the other one. And that's how the daddy was. She was a daddy's girl. It was like, whatever the mama said, the daddy went the complete opposite. <laughs> So I'm pretty sure the mama was over him at certain times. The mama is trying to get her out there in the world and to do something for real, for real with her life. Daddy is like, if this is what you want to do, honey, go ahead and do it. Mama, you shut your mouth up, okay? Let the girl do what she got to do, all right? Meanwhile, mama had a, um, honey had a little audition. Girl, she went to the audition. Now, I would have been so pissed. I would have been so pissed. She was standing out there for an audition. It was an open call and all of this stuff, whatever. They did not specify that, you know, at a certain time, this is where people who could just walk in and do their little audition compared to the ones that's there from an agency or whatever. So she was standing out line, outside in the line for all that time, only to get up there and they just say, who you with? She was like, I ain't with nobody. Oh, well, we had called. Mm -mm. We did those already. And she was like, well, you said that the audition's going to be open. And ain't nobody tell nothing, say nothing about her agency and all that stuff. And he was like, well, it is what it is. She said, come on. You mean to tell me I just can't go in the audition right now? He said, next. I said, damn. <laughs> so, honey, out here working two jobs, right? She a little defeated, but she's not going to let that stop her from her goal. You know, so she's out here working at the club at night sometimes. And then her day job is working at a um, music store where they was. I said, look at the nostalgia, bitch. Do people actually go to the stores to buy CDs? Let me tell you something. The last CD that I brought was um, Cowboy Carter. Um, And for what? I don't know. Maybe it's going to be for like, uh, um, what is it? Memorabilia? I don't know because I don't have a CD player. Maybe I haven't had a CD player in years. So what do I need to buy? A CD? <laughs> oh, they were stacking up all them CDs. I said, oh my God, I remember back in the day we used to go to Best Buy and get our CDs either Best Buy, Circuit City. Baby, we used to get them from Walmart until we realized that the majority of Walmart, they only sold like the clean version. Girl, like what? What? I'm grown. Please do not do that. Okay? Please do not do that. <laughs> then, um, she gets there, right? And we see, this is what we get introduced to Michael Ellis. He is this big time music director, um, video director, whatever. So, the guy that was taking a th photo and, and, and recording in the club and all of that stuff, he was recording, I guess, trying to scout out new, I don't know, crews or dancers or specifically women right and so he had the dancing crew video footage playing on the you know um in the office or whatever it caught michael's eye and one of the videos was of honey and he was like i want to get in contact with her he winds up going to a club where she was working at and you know coming up to her and trying to say, hey, so you're a dancer? I want you to come dance for me. No, I'm a music director. Okay, come on. Just do this. Whatever. She was like, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to dance for you. I'm not going to do that because you up there trying to say this. Everybody want to be a music director because they want to get some ass and all of that. You know, and... That's how they did. And they probably still do back in the day. That's how you see a lot of people getting taken advantage of. Getting, you know, R word and all this stuff. Because, oh, I'm a photographer. Oh, I'm a, 
I'm movie director. I'm this and you have to do this and do that for me just to get this and only to find out that they're lying. You know what I'm saying? And they just already sexually assaulted you. So yeah, she was on her P's and Q's about that, right? He talked about, so let's come up to the VIP. My name is Michael Ellis. And she was like, I don't give a fuck who you are. I'm not taking my clothes off. Mind you, she said it out right there from the jump. Baby, I am all about my business. Getting this cootie cat is never going to happen. He took that as a challenge. He took that as a challenge. Did y'all see the way that he was scratching himself in that club? I said, why are you scratching yourself? It gave very much crackhead energy, right? And then he was this white guy. And, you know, I don't know if he was trying to play off of Dave Myers. Because back in the day, Dave Myers used to be the one, the video director to go to. And he was a little white guy, too. But he used to he used to put out a lot of good videos, okay, for the hip-hop videos. Oh, sex. That was everything. And, um, you know, he was the one that the hip-hop artist was going to. And it just bothered me that he was this white guy and they kind of made him seem as if he was a regular white guy. But then he had a little bit of flavor. You would see him in and out here, throw a little slang in there, here and there. And I get it that this is like a hip hop movie or whatever because it's heavily hip hop influenced and, um, you know, in the black community and all of that. But you will see that by the way that they were dressing he was either even with makai pfeiffer's character Chaz, he like honey the first time we see him he's playing basketball with his crew at the um at the at the center that honey was teaching at her mama center right the next time we see him both every time we saw him he had on a jersey a different jersey i said what are we promoting you know i said is that all that you're gonna wear a different jersey here and a different jersey there can we put on a regular shirt next thing you know we see him in a tank top i said oh wow <laughs> okay you know you, you do what you had to do all right he's supposed to be the eye candy for real for real because michael ellis was not as much as he tried to think that he was michael ellis literally was playing one of the um, type of people that you could tell that he ain't getting no girls he ain't getting nothing when he was growing up and then all of a sudden he grew up and he got a little money, got a little power, got a little prestige. And now he can get anything and anyone that he wants. That's what he was doing, okay? And he thought he could run that shit with honey, right? And so, you know, she winds up calling. He don't call back. He do call back later, though. She gets a phone call from him. Leaves it on her um, message girl answering machine. I said, baby, first of all, in 2024, who still has a house phone? And who has an answering machine service? Back in the day, we used to have a Meritech. <laughs> a Meritech. Okay, with the answering machine and everything. We used to have that, right? I was like, damn, that was 2023. That was, bitch, that was 20 years ago. That was 20 years ago. Wow, can you imagine, like, nothing really has changed besides technology a little bit. Because we still kind of dress the same a little bit. The only thing is, the, the the baggy clothes ain't really as baggy. You know what I'm saying? But everybody still wear jerseys and do rags and, you know, talking how they talk and walking how they walk in the juries and everything. Like, it, it, it's a little bit. It's a little bit. You know, um, she did that. We see that little Raymond, you know, Benny, he tried to be a big brother by saying, you know, Raymond had came to their spot in a little store where they be kicking it at and doing a little drug deals and all that stuff. And he told him to get away. You don't need to be here or whatever. So, you know, at least he's trying to keep him away from all of that. But you need to keep yourself away. And we realize the reason why all of that is going on, right? Because they live in a dysfunctional ass household. One At one point, we see Honey walking down the street. Um, We see that, <clears throat> you know... She walking down the street or whatever, and she see little Raymond sitting outside the barbershop. She see him sitting outside the barbershop, and she was like, hey, what you doing out here? He goes, mind you, he's eight years old. And he look a little bit younger than eight, if you ask me. He goes, mama said I need to do something with my hair, so I'm sitting out here. And he had a nice head of hair, okay? And she was like, your mama is right. The whole time I'm thinking... So, your mama said you need to do something with your hair. You're sitting out here at the barber shop outside by yourself. And how are you supposed to pay for this? Nobody is. Where's the adult? Where is the adult? How are you?
you gonna tell an eight year old to go get his hair cut and I'm pretty sure you didn't give him no money and you didn't even make sure that he had his hair cut so thank goodness that um honey came around and took him inside the barbershop who just so happened to be Chaz's barbershop his her little love interest and you know he made him made him feel comfortable you know braiding him up and all that stuff whatever cool and she winds up taking him back home they live in the projects and he didn't want her to come into the house or whatever. He wanted her to just drop off and go. But come to find out, the mama is overworked, okay, and stressed the hell out. And it seemed like she got an abusive husband or boyfriend, I should say, with a whole bunch of kids ransacking the place, all right? Because she had a whole bunch of attitude for Miss Honey. And Honey better than me because I would have said, I was the one out here looking out for your goddamn cat, uh, child, okay? Because anything could have happened to him. And what would you have done? I don't care about you working all these hours or whatever okay it's about the child you know that's what happens when you become a mother that's what happens when you become a mother you know but hey it is what it is for miss honey she slammed that door in her face though she slammed that door in her face and i would have felt some type of way <laughs> like bitch are you serious i'm out here looking out for your child now, i ain't birthed this child but i'm seem like i care more about him than you meanwhile honey do get called to go do this video shoot for um video Jada Kiss, right? <laughs> first of all, she late. He ain't. First, this is how Honey should have known something was up with this man. First of all, he picked you up in a club, right? He told you to call his office or to call him and to set up some things, right? And when you do, first of all, club one, you call him. He don't even answer. And then they tell you he'll call you back. But he ain't got your number, so you got to say, oh, did you want my number? Oh, it was very much given that he really wasn't going to call her back if she hadn't asked, do you got my number? Let me give you my number, right? And then you don't call back directly. You wait probably the next day, and then you call her and leave a message on the answer machine. That's two. That's three right there. Then you get me to the goddamn video shoot, right? And you got me walking in into a whole bunch of stuff and people looking like, who the fuck is you? She going back there trying to get dressed and everything. They looking like, who is you? Okay, I said, first of all, <laughs> this is my first time doing something like this. And then you going to put me in there with the wolves, okay? And then when I finally get on set, I'm seeing that the, the, the video um, choreography is trying to go. And they trying to figure out the stuff with the dancers or whatever. And it's just not really flowing right. Honey don't know nothing. But see, Honey tried to make us sing that. Show that, listen. If you really about your craft, you're going to learn and, and you ain't going to wait for somebody to teach you and tell you, okay, these are the steps. As soon as Honey came out there on that, um, onto the, <laughs> the set before she got into the video, <laughs> Honey was like, I said, all right, you better learn the steps off side on the side. And then the choreographer. Who the fuck was that? If I want a hip hop video, if I want an R&B video, I'm sorry. I don't want, and I know this may sound some type of way to certain people that's probably watching. If you are, but I would prefer somebody black. Okay. Because I just feel like I got a new statement. Hmm. Okay. I just prefer somebody that look like they got flavor like me. You know what I'm saying? Not somebody with a Lord Farquhar bob that looks like she's supposed to be, you know, doing ballet or contemporary arts. You know what I'm saying? That's what it was given. And she had so much attitude to the choreographer. And she was, she they was all hating on Honey as soon as she got up in there. And because Michael, you know, he instantly drew connection to her. And, um, you know, basically put it out there that that's his girl. You know, that's his new thing of the week or whatever. And so he made her go up there to, you know, fill in the blanks and all that stuff. And then come up with her own choreography. He was like, go ahead and do what you do with you in the club. And when she did that, I said. Her choreography, her, her dance step wasn't no better than what the girl, other, the other girl did. No shade. No shade. And then it's like him singling her out and everything. I was like, honey, you got to be careful, baby. You don't want to get that reputation that you might be doing something with the director. And that's why you're getting all of these perks and everything or whatever. This is your first one, too. It, it was given very much that. It was given that a little bit. And I was, I was a little concerned for, you know. Um, she had her friends. 
uh, that was still out there doing stuff, you know, with her. Um, he did get her uh, uh, to meet up with Genuine at a, a, a gay club. What? I was really confused because we see her getting ready on one scene and um, we see Gina come in there. Gina was like, girl, where you going? She was like, I'm going to go to Papi Chulo's. Oh, you know what? I love the kids, but I ain't going to put all this stuff on or whatever. And I said, okay, girl, what you trying to do? She was like, no, nah, this is for a business meeting or whatever. Michael want me to come and all this stuff, or whatever. Woo, woo, woo. And I said, a business meeting with a heterosexual man and a gay club? And I do appreciate the fact that they were putting my community on display for real for real you know they had as soon as we saw them inside the club it was like a ball going on you know they were judging and you know giving out tents and we see them doing the dip and you know the drag uh announcer and all of that stuff it was it was cute it was cute only for them to go upstairs and then to have um rodney jerkins aka dark child and genuine and silk the shocker to come up in there and this is also that they can talk about the new video that they want to do and, you know, because everybody saw that Honey was up in Jada Kiss video and that she kind of choreographed, uh, choreographed it a little bit or whatever. And he was like, yeah, I want her to do this. Okay, go ahead and let her do this or whatever. You know, the people was cute. They was happy that she was up in the video and everything, you know. Oh, excuse me. This even made Benny come back to the class and all of this stuff or whatever. And so she got the video for Lil Genuine. She do give out a little, um, you know thing suggestion that you know when he do the video how about putting some of the kids in the video because she eventually did tweet video right and she brought Benny and Raymond to the set being her little assistants and I just didn't like the fact that Michael was out having dinner with her and was saying stuff like are these fresh air fun kids or something like that and I was just like, that's so goddamn rude. Okay, and she really didn't check him the way that I needed her to check him. But it just showed, like, when you are fresh into a business or a career opportunity, an industry or whatever, you can't really say certain things. That's how people feel these days. You can't really say certain things because... If you do, that's going to prohibit your chances to get a little bit further. And because you're new, so you just feel like you have to go ahead and go along with it. As much as a uh, fool this movie was and how it really wasn't that good, it has some good points in it. Okay? Because imagine if she would have spoke up then and t said something about what, what he was saying. He probably would have still did the same thing that he did to her eventually you know what i'm saying and so sometimes you got to come in and you just got to play along and get along you know what i'm saying and get a little bit further before so that you can get your foot wet you know what i'm saying so you can get a little bit of standing so that you can make certain demands and be able to say no to this and, and no to that you know what i'm saying and that's basically what i was getting out of it because we see all of that we see that today how do these people just be how did they get away with all this stuff? Why they taking so long to come out about certain things? Whatever. Because they ain't want to get blackballed in their field yet. You know what I'm saying? And they feel like they ain't had no power. And this is a powerful person. And it was just one of those type of situations, right? And so, yeah, she got a couple of videos. And before that tweet video, she did another video where she really was the main girl. And she was just doing all of this stuff, whatever. You know, for the most part, for like a sexy video vixen type of thing, she was doing her thing. I ain't even going to lie. Jessica Alba body was T up in this movie. I said, damn, bitch, you better do that. She finally got her little check. That first little check that she got, it wasn't no little check. It was over $9,000. I said, for being a video girl. Oh, but she did choreograph some stuff. So I said, all right, you better do what you got to do. Um, So you got that going on, right? And um, that one time when she was directing that other video, when the choreography really wasn't hidden the way that it was supposed to be hidden for that group. <laughs> and Michael said, uh, something's missing. I don't know what it is, but um, something missing. So fix it. She was like, okay, y'all go to lunch. She's sitting at the table. Mind you, they outside under the bridge in the ghetto, I guess. And she's looking at, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> mm. She's looking at some dudes playing basketball, right? And she just get this idea, okay, all of a sudden, she's just like, and she goes up to the gate, and she's just looking at them, and she's like, 
I see it. Then she goes and she see the girls playing double dutch. And she was like. <laughs> it, it's not fun. You want to know what make it funny is because she was so intensely looking at it and thinking about it. And in reality, I feel like a lot of people who do do dances and stuff, they get inspiration from things around them. But it was just, it, it just felt so fake. Okay, that's just what it was. And it's coming from Jessica Alba. So, I was just like, girl, all right. And so, she did a little choreography and she fixed the video and it was cute or whatever. Um, At one point, you know, she finds out that Benny had got... From Lil Raymond, she sees uh, Lil Raymond. I think he probably was at her doorstep or whatever of her building. And, you know, he was telling her how uh, the mama boyfriend basically uh, put his hands on Benny. You know, Benny had left. They found Benny up in a Chinese place. And, you know, <laughs> just trying to give him encouragement. Like, you don't need to be out here on the street. Come over here and do this and all this stuff or whatever. And just trying to be that positive force in his life. And that's what got them to go to the tweet video you know what i'm saying so i i do like i like the story overall when it's involving the kids right especially honestly let's let's just be clear honey really wasn't even though i said i don't need if i said it was a bad movie it was a bad movie in a sense of they should have got somebody else to play honey they probably could have got some other actors who could actually act the kids included right but when it comes down to the messages that was in the movie, good. Like this whole trying to get the kids off the street, trying to find something else for them to do, the whole trying to be mentors and having them role models and all of that. Um, Raymond, I feel like it was the message of Raymond needed a positive male influence. And so that's why, you know, he went to Chaz and Chaz was that positive male influence, even though we didn't really see them interact that much. But from that one moment, it was such a positive thing and it made him feel confident and everything, you know, um, you got honey trying to be that mentor, big sister, auntie, whatever. Well, we're going to call her big sister because she's, you know, 22, um, to him, you know, trying to get him out of trouble. And of course, you know how some of these kids are, they ain't going to listen to you right off the bat. They're going to wait till something happened to them and then they're going to realize, oh, I should have listened. And that's basically what happened, right? Um, because after all of that happened, you know, um, Otis, that's his name. His brother who is running the streets and who they working for winds up confronting Honey because Benny hasn't been there um, selling on the streets or whatever. He ain't, he, he, people in my crew, they ain't got time for nothing else. This comes when Chaz come in and save the day. Like, you know, trying to, he trying to punk him out, but Chaz really made him feel small. I don't understand how y'all street niggas be trying to make people who have legitimate jobs feel like they ain't doing nothing just because you making more money. But at least they have a little bit of security that, um, they not finna get arrested. They ain't gotta look over their shoulder all the time because they ain't out there doing nothing illegal. You may got all the paper, whatever, but baby, I got job security for right now. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gotta go through all the shit that you gotta go through, you know? And so we see them going to the date and everything and the center winds up shutting down a little bit because it had a leaky roof. So now that's the issue. Honey just so happened to be walking down the street. She see a uh, storefront that was for sale. She goes to the bank and she was trying to put some money down. Baby, that raggedy ass storefront was $170,000. The lady said, um, what you want with it? She said, listen, girl, I'm trying to do a little dance studio. She said, so $170,000, that means I have to put down like $17,000. How about I give you half right now and I come up with the other half in 30 days, okay? You can hold it for me, right? Sister said, yeah, okay, cool, girl, we could do that. I said, now see, I don't feel like the bank's really that, you know, lenient <laughs> and work with you like that. I said, you came up with the right person and she said, yeah, girl, I feel you. We could do this or whatever. I said, thank you. And so, you know, she had the kids come up there audition for, um, you know, the Genuine video. And then we see that Honey was supposed to go to Atlantic City for her friend Gina's birthday, right? Michael winds up telling her, no, we're going to this black and white party uh, uh, situation meeting that, well, we're going to this meeting and it's about 
a bunch of big wigs and everything that you would need to go. Okay. She was like, you know what? I really don't want to go. I'm already had plans. And he was like, no, you don't. And I said, who the fuck are you? <laughs> I already got plans. He was like, you ain't going to know AC. You are coming with me to this business meeting. Okay. And so she gets on the phone and she telling her friend, you know what, girl, I know, like, I'm so upset that I got to miss your birthday. But you know, girl, I get, I said, girl, it just bothered me. It bothered me so much. The forced accent of trying to sound down, trying to sound a little hood. You know what I'm saying? It was bothering me throughout the whole movie. That probably was the main thing. But like I said, if they would have got another actress who could really portray this, preferably black it would have worked so much better it would work so much better if you ask me right but when michael comes to her apartment that was a big mistake right there too i would have said i'll meet you downstairs he gives her some clothes come to find out it was to this black and white event a party and she was like if i would have known that it was a goddamn party i would have told you no and it was like you would rather go to ac for your friend's birthday than to come out here to a party with me okay uh, to meet a lot of big wigs and all that stuff, I would have been like, yeah, that's my motherfucking friend, okay, they could wait, you know, but she's not in that position, I guess she feels, um, that she could do that, because in her mind, she's thinking, you know what, all of the stuff that is happening to me right now is because of this man, so I can't really, I'm not in a position to say no just yet, right, they get to the party, she needed to make a phone call, right, he she asks for his cell phone she goes into a quiet room you have rodney jerkin standing there and you have this other guy and it was like she said she going to a quiet room and they chuckling at it and i said ew that's so disgusting given how we have been seeing so many people getting called out in the me too movement and now with the whole diddy situation and everything that was just so slimy okay because we already knew what was going to happen right there he goes up there basically trying to put a move on her and try to make it seem as if she was giving mixed signals and um, she should just go ahead and give him what she wanted, what he wanted, which was some ass. And she was like, it ain't never going to happen. Never is going to happen. And when he tried to push up on her, he slapped her. Or I said, she slapped him, I should say. And um, he gets upset at that. She said, baby. I wanted to thank you for giving me all this stuff professionally. I ain't gonna thank you for nothing else. You ain't making me for nothing else, okay? What are you doing? Calm your fucking roll, you know? And um, he got a little upset. I said, as soon as that happened, I knew what was gonna happen. We saw it coming. It's the day of the video shoot, cause she said, you know what I'm gonna do for you? I'm gonna act like this never happened. See you on Monday. Baby, that would've been the last time he saw me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I would have to sacrifice because I'm not finna sacrifice my morals and all that stuff for this motherfucker and I say nothing. But, you know, to each his own. They get to the video shoot. We see the, the kids dressed up in, um, you know, genuine hoodies or whatever. They got G on the front and they out there doing their thing. Genuine, loving it, loving it, loving it. And then Michael finally gets to the set. He gets to the set and he say, run, playback. Girl, they must have ran it for two seconds before he said, cut. No, this ain't working. Um, bring the cars in or something. I said, wait a minute, what? What is there something? Girl, they went and got a whole fleet of cars, fancy cars, only for Michael to say, yeah, on second thought, the kids situation, situation shit, it's not going to happen, so you can tell them to go. And she was like, you can tell them why, you can fire them, I'm not going to do that. Michael, please don't do this. He was like, bitch, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Okay, you asked me, and you, he, he literally said, you saying that like I give a damn, like I care. I don't give a fuck. Now, when he tried to push up on, um, when he was trying to kiss her in that room, and after she said, after she said, Michael, that ain't what is, this, this ain't what I'm here for, or something, actually, she slapped him. He said, bitch, why you tripping, or something like that. He tried to talk slang, too. And I was just like, oh, one thing I cannot stand one thing I can I can I can be okay with a, a Latina or a Latino, you know, if, especially if they grew up around it, you know, because some of them they do speak slang or whatever, and it's understandable. I get it, 
But will you know for sure that a white person did not grow up around that and they probably just emulated what they see either on TV or what they listening to on um, uh, uh, music wise or whatever. And they try to talk that way. It is just so cringy. And I busted out laughing so bad when he did that. But basically because she won't put out for him. He basically broke those kids hearts. Uh, Benny went back to his crew, wound up getting arrested for stealing this boy's shoes. Well, no, he stole this boy's shoes for the dude in the group, you know. And then he winds up getting arrested because he was selling drugs and he sold it to an undercover cop. So he went to juvie. Next thing you know, we got um, Honey, she out here trying to get dance auditions and, and, and placements or whatever. Dude did fucking blacklisted her. You literally hear the dude sitting at the table saying... If this the one that they was talking about, yeah, we don't need her. If this the one, if they say that's what she did or something like that. I said, what did you put out there that she did? She do shit. But she told that motherfucker, no, that's it. Girl, now she got there trying to, you know, beg the bank lady. Can you give us a little bit more time? Can't do it. She had a little conversation with her parents. And of course, the mama is on her ass. The daddy said, do what you got to do, baby. Okay. Her friend put a note on her door because somebody had took a picture of her and Michael at that party. And she was like, I hope your meeting was good. <laughs> she turned it around and it was the picture. <laughs> and so she was waiting outside Gina's apartment. And, you know, they had a little conversation. Of course, they ain't going to be mad at each other for long. And she gave forgave her. Chaz winds up hitting her up with this old abandoned church because they was going to put on a benefit concert that was the only way that they can make the money and i said that's a good idea you know and the way that the community i said first of all i feel like this is a lie because i'm sorry for the people that's in new york it just feel like this one really happened this way <laughs> because it's new york and maybe i'm getting my uh I'm getting my opinion off of probably some misconceptions about New York and some of the communities or whatever. But everybody was just all the way here for it or whatever. But I did like that part though. And I do like the fact that they did not have, besides them having the typical little gang members or whatever, selling a little drugs, whatever. I ain't even going to say gang, but just, you know, the street dealers selling drugs on the corner or whatever. It wasn't so violent. It wasn't too much. And they really didn't have such a negative perception of New York and of the hood or whatever that you want to call it. It was very toned down. And I can I can appreciate that. It wasn't gritty. It was it was a it had a gloss over it. You know what I'm saying? And it made it kind of look a little pretty. It did. And I mean I can dig it because sometimes you want to be seeing all that hardcore shit. <laughs> sometimes you don't want to see the overly exaggerated shit of it, you know. But um, they go to the community putting out flyers and everything about the dance benefit that they're going to do so she could get the money to buy this um, <clears throat> the storefront and everything. And Gina winds up talking to the uh, lady from the bank. And, you know, she comes on board because she has people who likes to donate to nonprofit organizations and things and such. And so um they wind up having the event, but before that, um she goes down and visits Benny at Juvie and basically the way that they sit there and talk and she be trying to sound so hard and so like I'm down with you or whatever and I'm from this place whatever. I know how it is. Okay, cuz I'm from the hard knocks, you know what I'm saying? You know, but just trying to come to his level and say, you don't need to be doing what you're doing, okay? And, of course, he's want to be stubborn and say, who the fuck are you to tell me this and all this or whatever. I'll do what I want. And then she hit him with the, okay, well, you getting out of juvie tomorrow, right? That, huh? And let me just ask you this. You been in here all this time. How many people from your crew actually came to see you? And how many days did they do it? Absolutely no one and never, Okay. That's just what it was, right? Mind you, she cool with the mama now. Because the mama told her the information. I said, oh, okay. Um, so at that point, you know, he do eventually gets out. <laughs> she comes to the show, uh, to the uh, place where they was rehearsing. And finds out that, you know, he was there. And, you 
know, it was cool or whatever. I was like, oh, he has a change of heart. Somebody really cares. Meanwhile, Michael was over there trying to do Missy Elliott video. Missy Elliott is pissed off because she wanted Honey Daniels to choreograph her video. But instead, who do they have? Katrina. And I forgot to say, on the video shoot for the Genuine video, when they packed up all the kids and told them to get the hell about it, and they brought them cars, baby Katrina and her whole ass came up out that car with her body just showing and was like, we're going to make it sexy. This is what the, um, you know, the, the studio wanted. And I said for the song that it was sound, the song didn't even uh, inqu require all of that. You know what I'm saying? It made more sense to have the kids in there than to have this girl in there just shaking her ass and doing all of that. And that's just what it is. Like some of these people just want to have sex. They say sex there. That's how it was like when I was looking at Glitter, the last movie I did. And she was on the set and dude said, show more tits. <laughs> <laughs> sex sales okay and I was just like ugh and I get it sometimes it, 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 it's a moment and it's a point where you can put a little sexiness in that's what the music video calls for because that's what the music is for but you are finna choreograph something for a Missy Elliott music video now granted Missy can, can say some explicit things some sexually charged things but when we watch a Missy Elliott video why are we seeing women shaking her asses like that, or at least Missy doing that? And then when he had Katrina to show her something, she said, "What the fuck is this?" And the dun 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 dun, bitch, that had me rolling so bad each and every time I see it. Because what was it? You are going to be a choreographer or any type of thing that you do, and you working with somebody. You have to observe them. You have to know who they are, their personality, and read the fucking room as to what they're about. Now, why the fuck would you come up there trying to get Missy Elliott to come up there trying to pop her cat like that? Like, girl, what? I said, now, Lorian, Lorian, let's be real, Miss uh, Boom Boom Cat. And so, Missy straight up told Michael, and I told you that I wanted Honey Daniels. That's not a Honey Daniels. And you can get back to me once you get her Honey Daniels. He tried to find Honey. Tried to convince her to come back. And she said, oh, so you do all this because I fucking didn't want to, you know, take your advances towards me. And um, now it's coming to the point where people don't want to work with you if you don't have me on the set. Because the artists are requesting me. And you know what? I'm going to need you to figure that out. He tried to bribe her and say, I'll buy your little storefront if you do this. And she said, you know what? I'll do it myself. Have a good day. And I said, that's what you got to do, honey. That's what you got to do, honey. Don't ever, don't ever sell your soul to the devil. Okay. Don't ever do that. You know? And the devil don't really just be the devil in a biblical sense. The devil be in human form. And he was the devil. I knew Michael really wasn't shit. When I seen him writing with his left hand the way that he was doing it. I said, uh-uh, why are you writing with your left hand like that? Now, let me tell you something. Somebody that's a left-handed person going to be like, bitch, what is it with a left-handed person? What you trying to say? I don't trust some of y'all. Some of y'all are okay. Some of y'all not, okay? I be looking at y'all sideways. My little sister is left-handed, and I look at her sideways, too. But, not necessarily. She, she left-handed because the way she was born... They fucked up her um, shoulder. Her right shoulder got stuck in my mama's pelvis. Uh, all of that shit. Um, and the way that they pulled her out, it kind of weakened her right her right side. So, she prone to a left. That's an exception, okay? That's an exception. But some of y'all is a, just like I don't. Aquarius women. Pisces women. Hmm. Somebody just said, damn it, Ashley, you're going to stop. We, why you keep on trying to throw strays at us? Okay. Cause we had nothing to do with it. I mean, <laughs> I'm just saying, right. I'm just saying, you know, if you're not bad, you cool, but not all y'all are. Anyway, moving on for that. The benefit actually happens and you know, it goes on without a hitch. Her family was there. Uh, she gets up there and this is what got me. She was like, wow, you guys look beautiful tonight. <laughs> I said, what are you saying? Mind you, she's talking about the audience. <laughs> I 
I said, girl, if you don't get your ass up there and introduce some people and just tell them to listen to them, listen to the music, let it fill you in, and, and watch the kids dance, okay? That's all we want to do. I just want to dance. And them kids got out there and what they had to do. It was cute. Mind you, they was dancing to a Yolanda Adams. Mm. All right. All right. They did what they had to do. Miss Grelly from the bank came through. Um, it was really nice to see Benny and Raymond's mama just really, you know, excited for her boys and seeing them not on the street and doing nothing and getting them in trouble. And she was really excited and everything. Um, Tweet was there. The end of the video or the movie when Missy was trying to get in touch with uh, Honey and she was cussing out that driver because he took the wrong way or whatever. That was funny as hell. I said, now, Missy, I really hope you ain't like this in real life, but that shit was funny. But anyway, y'all, and then, you know, if you stay to the end of the credits, of course, I'm pretty sure she got her dance studio. And you stay to the end of the credits. Um, uh, It doesn't go off directly. It goes into the black video, right, for the song. I will say this. If I had to rate Honey, I would probably give it a 7, Okay. I'll give it a 7 overall out of 10 because, again, like I said, they got the wrong actor actress to play the part, but, and that feels like a little bit of color colorism or whatever, and you can bite yourself with that, but we already know how that goes. Um, because, also, the acting wasn't as good. But the messages overall were good to me. You know what I'm saying? And it was a fun movie. So nothing too deep, nothing too major. And it it it, it kind of went along with the times back then. So I did like the movie for the most part. I just know that Jessica Alba can't dance. Well, let me tell you something. What happened to, uh what was it, L.A. Finest between with her and um, Gabrielle Union? I like that series. What? I needed them to come back for a second season, okay? Because I don't know. I don't know if it came back for a second season. Either way, it should have had multiple seasons. I like the series, okay? I wish Gabrielle Union character would have came back to Bad Boys. In a, oh, excuse me. Could have been in Bad Boys 3. I, I would like for her to make an appearance in Bad Boys 4, but, you know, probably won't happen. But, hey, it is what it is. You guys, I hope you enjoy this. And, um, let's discuss, okay? I did not know I was going to talk for an hour and over an hour for this but um yeah enjoy your weekend thank you for tuning in and um i will see you guys later and again i apologize if the glare was bothering you but it's sunny as hell out here in chicago so hey can't ask for anything better i'll see you guys later peace